All right, thank you, Maxime, for the introduction. Hi, everyone, in Synopsis. My name is Brian Gallagher. I am one of the co-founders of Partesia Blockchain. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is Partesia Blockchain and what our project is all about, uh, what we specialize in and some of the amazing use cases that we're bringing to the market. So um, just to start, you know, Partesia Blockchain Foundation is based out of Zug, Switzerland. But the Partesia team itself is actually primarily based out of Denmark. Uh, but we have teammates in Dubai, in Switzerland, where the foundation is based, and even in the US. Uh, so we're a pretty global organization. There's about 60 people who work full time on this project now. Um, and we, what we do is, you know, we bring a new layer one technology to blockchain. Um, so let's sort of dive in. Uh, this is just sort of historically, you know, how uh, the world and, you know, governance systems have evolved and where we're headed, at least in our opinion, is, you know, networks and cryptographic enforcement. So, you know, governance based on code that's open source, transparent. And uh, I think that, you know, Vartija blockchain plays a role in that because we bring sort of privacy technology on the blockchain that enables you know, dozens of new use cases that typically couldn't use a public blockchain, uh, which allows for, um, you know, better uh, coordination between parties where you can coordinate inside of private environments using public blockchains, public cryptocurrencies. Um, this is just your basic, you know, sort of Web3 explanation. I think for the Synapsis audience, uh, you, you all have this covered. Um, but just going back to, again, you know, Partesia. Partesia has been a company that's been around for a long time. Uh, since 2008, we've been developing advanced cryptographic solutions for enterprises such as, you know, multinational corporations like Bosch or SBI Japan. Uh, and basically the whole purpose of multi-party computation, which is our flagship technology, is it allows you to compute on multiple parties uh, on their encrypted data. So you can keep the contents of data secure and secret, but you can yield results from secret encrypted data. And that's sort of the big breakthrough and innovation that we bring. In the industry, you hear a lot about zero knowledge proofs. It's a common term that's being more popular by the day. A zero knowledge proof is a two party computation. So you and your friend can share a secret with each other. Uh, so use cases like Monero or Zcash are an example of you know, zero knowledge proof technology where you have a two party secret computation where if I sent Monero to a friend, you know, only we would know that we sent it to each other. But what we bring, we term zero knowledge computation and it's multi-party computation. So we can have multiple parties sharing secrets and you know it's not just a true false output you can get any results from the secret computation uh, so the team is super credible if you research partija and its co-founders uh, you'll see that you know we have basically been in the field on, from a research perspective and then development perspective since the 80s when ivan domgard is one of the co-founders um, <clears throat> first started his research into MPC and, uh, you know, had uh, already uh, contributed to the merkel Domgard hash function, uh, which is a very popular cryptographic uh, protocol that's, you know, sort of the underpinnings of a lot of uh, tech cryptographic technology that blockchains are used or, you know, based on today. Um, we are at a good place now. Um, you know, we decided to do the public protocol to bring MPC and blockchain together um, in 2018. And now we've, you know, established a Swiss foundation that took 15 months to get the approval from the regulator. And we've raised $53.5 million from some top tier crypto investor firms. And uh, we actually just deployed our mainnet and then in this month of June, 2022, you're gonna see 
uh, some private smart contract capabilities, the zero knowledge nodes coming to the to the network. So if you buy and stake MPC tokens, you can run three different types of nodes. So we'll get to that. Uh, but the zero knowledge nodes, which you know allow for multi-party computation, those are coming live this month. This is just a bit more of the history of the project. I kind of just uh, talked about it, but here it is visualized. But there's three core areas of our layer one that are uh, innovative and make our technology superior to the competition. We've talked about privacy and zero knowledge nodes, multi-party computation. No other layer one chain has data privacy built into the protocol itself, as well as the smart contract layer. So it's a big innovation we bring to market that allows for some incredible use cases like supply chain coordination, you know, private stable coins that are still auditable. So you can audit, it's auditable privacy so that you can run private environments and keep transactions secure and, and private, but you can still have full audit capabilities for regulation. So the interoperability that we bring with our bridges uh, this is based on MPC and secret key sharing schemes, uh, which is much more secure. You can kind of think of it as the open source decentralized fire blocks. So when assets or data move across chains using our bridge, uh, these assets are managed in a, a more secure way you know, using MPC technology. Then there's scalability. We address scalability by building sharding into the protocol. So you have sharded transactions on Protegia blockchain. So what that means is, you know, if you were to stuff 10,000 transactions at once onto the Ethereum network, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced the gas wars where if you pay more, you can skip the line and get to the front. But you're basically still pushing all those transactions through one single door. With sharding, it's essentially you're able to open multiple doors and spread the transactions out across shards. Um, so we've uh, developed that and it's live on mainnet already. So we're proud to say that we're one of the first uh, public protocols to successfully implement sharding beyond just a conceptual uh, standpoint, which is um, which a lot of the industry has you know, conceptualized using sharding. We actually have it in production. Uh, this is a bit outdated now. We've raised a bit more money than you see on this slide, but these are all the features um, that we bring and just kind of <clears throat> went through them. So how does the token economy work? It is unique. And what I mean by that is our node operators are not rewarded in our native currency. So we don't inflate our supply to pay node operators and we don't have a fee model that deducts MPC tokens from transactions and pays the node operators. You actually buy our tokens and you stake them to run the nodes and we're a multi-chain network. So you're bringing currencies onto the chain. We call it bring your own coin, BYOC. So you bring other currencies like Ethereum or USDC or USDT or Bitcoin. And you actually pay for network transactions using other liquid currencies. So our node operators are essentially running like a decentralized MasterCard or Visa network where the different transactions are happening in different currencies and they're netting the fees in said currency. This is a really unique model. It doesn't put sell pressure on our token from the node operators who need to liquidate. Um, and it kind of keeps our token locked as collateral in the staking environment. So node operators, you know, running BYOC nodes, which is the most, uh, you know, sensitive node operation because you're doing cross-chain asset transfer, which is where a lot of the hacks and problems we see in this industry occur is on that cross-chain level. Um, so that's what our token is used for. Um, we call ourselves a layer one plus two because we offer layer two privacy for other networks. So what we knew coming into this project is that we can't go out and just tell everyone, hey, we're a new layer one. You've been building on another layer one for the last four years, completely switch over to us. It's just not realistic to expect everyone to want to make that migration right away. So what we do is we offer privacy across chain. So you can deploy a private smart contract by staking MPC tokens and putting it on the Partija blockchain. And then you can link it up to your existing DAP on another network, like our recent partnership with Polygon. So Polygon does have access to our uh, zero knowledge smart contracts. And we also partner with Emergo, one of the uh, co-founding developer groups at Cardano. So that's, uh, that's how we uh, built a network effect into our architecture. 
And that's what you see here in this, this image as well. These are the three types of nodes I mentioned. You have your basic Baker nodes facilitating your regular transactions. You have your zero knowledge nodes. This is where you do the MPC and multi-party computation. You can coordinate on private data in a private environment. And then your Oracle nodes is where you can run cross-chain uh, transactions and make the most money from your, from your node. So these are just more advanced graphical charts about what the job of a Baker node does and how it works. You do the same here with this chart for zero knowledge nodes. So maybe you can play this back and study the chart if you're interested in the uh, technical architecture and diagramming side of the project. Uh, these slides are useful. And here's your BYOC Oracle node. And it shows how you can bridge assets from Ethereum to Partesia blockchain and then back to Ethereum. And actually, if you look at this chart, you'll notice at the bottom, epoch one through six. Something else unique we do is when you move assets and data across chains using Partesia blockchains bridging technology, we actually segregate assets into epochs. So we don't allow the accumulation of risk into one giant pool, but rather we segment it into epochs. So let's just give an easy to understand example. Every 100 ETH that comes across the chain onto, onto Partesia blockchain across the bridge, it, it would fill into epoch one and then we open epoch two. So it would actually make a hack on this network much more difficult because the hacker would have to hack into each epoch separately to drain assets uh, rather than just hacking the bridge once and taking everything that's inside. And so we've uh, architected and developed with security as a first priority. Here's just some initial benchmarking against some of the other layer ones. As you can see, you know, we do about one cent a transaction. People say, well, well, Solana's, you know, zero, 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 one cents. Well, that's why they get DDoSed all the time because it doesn't cost anything to spam that network. We've seen that be a pitfall of EOS. And now we're seeing that be a pitfall of Solana where it's been going offline pretty regularly due to uh, the spamming of the network. Our TPS is also based on how many shards we're running. So right now we're running three shards. Every shard we add can reliably add about 1,000 transactions per second. So, you know, very valuable to have dynamic sharding and be able to scale up your network. Uh, and then if you just kind of look down the list, you know, you'll see there's some things we do that other people don't, which is MPC as a service private smart contracts, bring your own coin, being a multi-currency network. So we're really excited about all these innovations that we bring and how the developers can adopt it. The go-to-market is a three-tiered approach. So the connecting existing networks is our most valuable go-to-market because we're bridging privacy to Polygon, Cardano. We have several of the other top networks coming next. So there's a nice network effect built in there where the devs can leverage our technology without any switching costs. So that's one go to market. Uh, we also are on Launchpad and we uh, sort of contribute to some of those projects. Uh, but then we also have a focus on SDG flagships. So we have a counterfeit medicine detection application. We have a trade finance application. Um, we have uh, you know, private stable coins uh, that are being used by NGOs to deliver uh, aid to crisis zones. So where our branding is kind of headed is that we, our technology solves major economic and social problems. Counterfeit medicine is a multi hundred billion dollar a year industry and it kills millions of people every year. Trade finance gap is $2 trillion a year of money that gets left on the table uh, between people not getting paid on you know, supply chain coordination. So by putting that on chain and making a letter of credit function like, a, uh, like a, in a smart contract, instead of the centralized banking system, then allowing the DeFi economy to LP into these different deals. That's an entirely gigantic market that hasn't hit blockchain yet that can address a $2 trillion a year problem. So we're going after some of the biggest economic problems and trying to solve them with our infrastructure. These are the initial partnerships with Emergo and uh, Polygon uh, that I mentioned, where we're doing the cross-chain private coordination. And here's just some of the other, you know, you can do a thing of confidential whistleblower use cases, reusable credentials in KYC, better internet search is the name of a DAF that's coming where you can get paid for your internet searches. 
uh, all your browser history can stay local, you know, not on a central server like Google or Facebook. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is our flagship use cases we're going after. We already did NFT fundraising with Red and the Global Fund, who raised almost half a million uh, for charity. That was a big success. And so here's our roadmap. As I mentioned, uh, version 3.0 is coming out this month of our mainnet. And that's going to be mostly focused on uh, the Polygon integration as well as the uh, zero knowledge nodes launch. Let's take a look at the graphic. Bit of small text, you got to look closely. Um, but uh, you can kind of see all the different features we have planned all the way until 2025. So this is a long term project. All of our people who bought in are on four year quarterly unlock from the private sale. So everyone's in it together for the long haul. Mm. These just have more to do with our different types of applications we built. So, you know, we kind of focus on the internet search engine I mentioned with a DAP called Better Internet Search. It's a really cool use case. Instars.com is social networking on chain where you can claim your identity or your Twitter account and pair it to your public key. Then you can tweet essentially, but you can tip coins or earn coins for participating. Off exchange matching, so like kind of dark pool technology, matching, you know, uh, bids and asks across different platforms without having to show them. So you eliminate wash trading and spoofing from markets. Huge use case. Uh, and then, you know, you can really do much better financial fraud detection. So we're working on a big use case in this uh, category, as well as cybersecurity with the Cyber Peace Institute to uh, sort of alert when hackers are coming. Uh, and do a better sharing of private data across different platforms. Uh, this is the use case I mentioned where you can have auditable private e-cash. So we're working on some pilots with some big NGOs and uh, central banks to get a private stable coin network running so that, you know, you think of the banking system. When I send a bank wire, you send someone else a bank wire. Those aren't on a public blockchain. They don't need to be, they shouldn't be. You need to have some level of privacy. But you know, using blockchain, it'd be more efficient to move assets across borders and different places, but you do need it inside of a private environment. It can't be as private as Monero or Zcash because there's no auditability. So then crime falls into the play. But if you have an auditable system, then you can have that level of privacy and run a banking system on a blockchain like Partesia. And then just to finish here, you know, our tokenomics, we uh, sold about 35% in the, in the pre-sale. We've sold 5% of what will be sold to the public over the next few years. Uh, so about, you know, at the end of the first, I believe four years, half the supply will be vested. These are some of our biggest partners. So red.org is a very famous charity co-founded by Bono and Bobby Shriver. We just did the NFT auction with them, did a great job raising money for charity. KuCoin Labs participated in our early contribution round, as well as Emergo from Cardano. Uh, but if you look at this list, you'll also see some other huge names. P2P Validator is one of the biggest delegated staking validators in the uh, entire crypto economy. They have a few billion dollars in staked assets. And that's it. So just go to Partesia Blockchain to learn more. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to the Synopsys audience for tuning in. And thank you for taking the time to hear about Partesia Blockchain. And please feel free to reach out on our Telegram or Twitter at Partesia MPC is our Twitter. Partesia chat is the community chat on Telegram. But you can get all our links from our website as well, ParteziaBlockchain.com. Thanks, everyone.